Hey, what's up, garden friends? Jeff here. How's everybody doing? Hope you're good. I am great. Yeah, that's why that box is there. It's empty. Yes, technically there's garbage on my counter. But it's Pumpkin's favorite thing to lay on. Don't bother with cat beds, but clean laundry and pizza boxes. That's her jam. So, she can hang out there for a day. It's all right. You like that pizza box? You're such a good girl. You're such a good baby butt. Yes, you are. Is this what you're... Oh, now you're going for the hard food. She's been hovering around me like she wants me to give her treats. I'm like, don't know. We don't do treats anymore. Not until you get back on track with your eating. I mean, she'll eat the treats. Good morning, Tobes. Oh, you're just nasty. You're a nasty boy, Toby. It is a beautiful day. You coming? Are you going to make me wait on you? I mean, absolutely gorgeous. It's like 73 degrees. It does not feel like July, that's for sure. The cicadas, they're so happy they can't stop rejoicing. Yeah, the pine tree's dead. I'm just going to go into a little temporary thing of denial about that because I have other things I'd rather do. And it's supposed to be like this pretty much all week. Isn't that exciting? Exciting. Yeah, it's a carpenter bee, but I haven't been seeing them up on the house, so I'm not that worried about it. It's a bee. I'm happy to be seeing bees out here. Say, I'm actually a little bit concerned. I haven't seen a single honeybee this year, which is odd. My backyard is normally just covered in honeybees. Not one. Haven't seen one. I, for some reason, I thought there was a bee on here. Trent, there's no bee there. So because of that, I have some planters I kind of want to try and toss together. That's probably not going to be in this video. Just sort of thinking out loud here. But there are a few little planters I want to put together that's like full of pollinator type plants and see if that helps with them. I haven't been using chemicals in the garden other than the mosquito stuff in the grass. And then like I mentioned in the last vlog on my, uh, what is it, the areca palms, they be getting sprayed just the areca palms for the mealy bugs. And that, I, I don't know. Not good. Not good at all. Where'd the bees go? If you guys noticed this too? Or is it something going on out here? It's been incredibly rainy here. It's not been a normal year. So there could be other factors. Like this year, it's been mostly... Ugh, it's so ugly. Just a lot of rain. So the flies have been really bad. Black flies, midge flies, buff... Which I think are the same thing. Midge flies and buffalo gnats, I think they're the same thing. Black flies and uh, no seams, which aren't a normal thing in St. Louis unless like you're near the river or on the sand and no but they're they're everywhere they're eating everyone alive these things are just so top heavy they're beautiful though but very top heavy anyways this is what I'm doing I'm actually gonna start off with this and get this area taken care of it was supposed to happen in the last vlog but then there was like a little miniature mudslide and just didn't work out it's the way things go sometimes but um I have this spruce here right who are you pine the norfolk island pine that's who it is i have pine trees and spruces on my mind that needs to be repotted and otherwise i'm gonna start planting up in here with all the clearance plants and things and make it look better it's not gonna look phenomenal when it's done things need to grow in things take some time but it'll look better that's, that's what i'm going for here it's just an improvement Oh, and just to circle back real quick before I get into the planting part of this, with the honeybees, I know there are probably going to be comments saying put in a beehive, which I'm totally for. I've talked to my neighbors about it, though, and there are a lot of children living around here, and there are several that are allergic, so it's just been agreed upon. It's probably not a good idea, so that's just wanted to put that out there so that they don't have to answer that in the comments. Okay, so now I'm going to put... You know, I'm, the things are happening. Okay, I was trying to figure out a place to set my tripod so that I can like actually film doing this, but the prompt, there's like no, there's not enough room. So I'm just gonna do a before and after. I'm sorry, I wanted to do something fun with music and whatnot, but this is just, the, so here it is now. And then, and then after, look at that. I, there's a lot of transplants. The majority of things over here actually are not even like planted into the planters. They're still in their nursery cans that way I can lift them right back out. It's late in the season, so I didn't see a reason to like dig in too heavily. Remember, a lot of clearance plants in here. Things a little rough. They'll recover. It's all right. Everything's fine. 
the caladiums over here. These were all the ones that were around my Alexander palm, and I pulled those, lifted them over here. I fully anticipate the caladiums to throw an absolute fit over being pulled up and moved over here. One, because, I mean, it's just a little bit of transplant shock that happens. And then two, because there's not as much sun over here. There's morning sun, but that's that's pretty much it. Like, maybe, if even four hours of morning sun. So, that's a big difference from, they were getting a lot of sun where they were. Too much. That's why the leaves are looking like this. This is one of the reasons I wanted to get this area started on. Because you can see how the foliage is cupped up on these. That's because they were getting too much sun where they were. So, it's time to get them moved. With these cool temperatures we're having this week, they probably would have been fine over there. But I don't think things are going to stay like this. Let's hope not. That would be very, very odd. It's, you know, like July, today's July 20th, 21st. That wouldn't be normal for things to stay this cool. So I've, things will be back up near the triple digits pretty soon, and they'll be better over here in the shade. So I popped a croton in here. This is the one that the palm tree fell on, but it shaped, fill, it, it shaped, its shape filled in this gap quite nicely. Some of those cordoin fruticosas, more, those are more of those ones that I got for like a buck back in the winter time. Uh, there are some curcumas in here, the alyssumifolas, the uh, Siam tulip curcumas. So there's one right here. Well, there's multiples right there. And then there are a few more over here. They have a nice pop of color, a little bit of height. I may still end up putting something taller in this pot, but I don't think I need to. That was something I was trying to figure out. But with the pine back here, which I don't love the pine over here, but it's doing well, so that's where I'm going to leave it. And then um, philodendron, Salome, popped in here. Bipanidifidum, Monstera deliciosa, variegata... Uh, Thai constellation, which will probably be moving. I've been talking about that. There's an Alpinia zerumbit here in the front. I do have an extra planter right here, just because I think I might want to tuck like some hostas or something, something else in there. I haven't decided yet, but there's a pot there. I have worked some coleus into the cracks over here. They love the shade, and this is also where I have a lot of my broken pottery, by the way. <laughs> so that's. Another reason I fill things in so heavily. Another cordoin fruticosa that I tucked in there. I planted impatiens in the front of this planter and then this one over here. Obviously, they're not going to look great right now because I just put them in here. Sunwise, they're on the minimum. And you know, impatiens to keep them flowering nicely, they actually do need some sun. So hopefully, four hours of morning sun should do the trick. I think it will. The creeping jenny in the front of this pot, I just ripped it up out of the ground from over here. So that's why it looks like that. It'll recover. It'll be fine. Everything's going to be okay. It's going to look very pretty and not too long at all. And then in the back, this back here, this has been here. That's a false Aurelia. This is an Alakaja. I don't remember the name, but uh, it's beautiful. And I actually put this up on a plant stand behind everything to give it some height because what's really nice about this Alakaja is actually the undersides of the foliage. Isn't that absolutely stunning? It's so pretty, but to really be able to see that, it needed to be up a little bit higher. So when new foliage comes up and emerges, you can see how it, you know, does that. So you can see that color in there. And um, I'm liking that by having it up a little bit higher. Sunwise, I'm still going to have to keep an eye on it. The alakajas can go way, way, way more shady than the kalakajas. But still, like, I, if it starts to come forward, then I'll move it for now. I like it right there. There's a tree branch that saw the neighbor's tree. I need to climb back there and pull out. But otherwise, oh, and I did, there's another croton back here, a mammy croton, another clearance plant that was like 50 cents. Threw that in there. These are all things I picked up over the winter time for the most part. A lot of them are. And uh, yeah, there's some, oh, and I moved a macho fern over here. The macho ferns, where I had them over by the water fountain, they're getting too big. They're blocking the light to the anthurium. So I've, went ahead and pulled one over here and then uh, I'm going to do some rearranging because I really want one over in that area where that fountain is but I, uh, I need to move it. So I popped one over here. It's a big change in lighting but the more over this way things get the more light there is. And look at how the sweet potato vines are doing. It's too much. I actually don't like it but um, it'll do for now. I've also been going through and pulling weeds when I see them. There's a dandelion over here that I've just left because Colby likes to come over and snack on it. So that's Colby's dandelion. He can have it. It never goes into flour or anything because he eats it. But yeah, the sweet potato vine, I, like I said, I'm just, I'm not crazy about it. It's, I like the leaf shape. I think it'd be great in fall planters. 
a little bit too big and bushy for this right here. You can see what it's doing to the impatience back there underneath this windmill palm. But um, like I said, I do like it. So I shouldn't say I don't like it, because that's not true. I just don't really like it for this. Not, not, it's not my jam. And then I have a planter over here that I've also left blank because I haven't decided what I want to do with it yet. I think I'm probably going to put this alakaj in here that he's kind of leaning a little bit. Uh, another no-name variety, but it's very pretty. Nice foliage. I don't like to give them a name if I don't have a tag unless it's something really obvious like the curcumas or an impatient. But I was thinking I might do that as a centerpiece in here and do a bunch of impatients and then more caladiums because I have so many caladiums that were supposed to go out front. So that could go there. And I have a plant stand back there that I might put maybe a bonsai or something on if I have one that's shady enough. So yeah, there's still more to do, but this is the gist of it. Kind of the bones of the area. And it's supposed to look like this. I like it looking jam-packed and lush. I like to have things tucked in the nooks and crannies because I just want this space to feel naturalized. Because when I'm hanging out over here on the glider, sometimes I bring my little sitting pillow out and I'll sit over here and just like have quiet time. It's nice. It's a very lush feeling and makes me happy. I am looking forward to the caladiums getting their act together though because they look pretty stupid like that. Otherwise, I like it. The pine, it's whatever, it's fine. And I do have some solar powered fairy lights that I was thinking about working into here, but they're kind of old and they're stuck on like the flash mode. So I need to be able to fix that and then I'm gonna have to find a place to put the solar panel on it because I don't think a few hours of morning sun's gonna be quite enough for it, but I don't know, it might be, we'll see. But yeah, that's like I said, the bones are done and I'll be adding and changing and rearranging because it is a little messy. I like to give things like a week or so to get it together, put some roots down and adjust a little bit before I make a final judgment. And it's an easy thing to swap. Oh, well, that didn't make any sense. It's very easy to swap things out over here. Cause like I said, a lot of things are still in the nursery cans. I can just pull them up, pop something else in its place, rearrange very, very, very easily. Like I think another coleus might look good down there. Or I might even get uh, put together a small planter that I can wedge back there into that crack and put impatience in there. So it goes impatient, impatient, impatient. I just want some flowery color over here, even though I'm like big on the lush foliage and everything, the lighter color flowers, like I've always talked about with the white flowers, it draws the eye in at nighttime and during the day, they're reflective and it helps make everything else stand out. So I may end up doing that, I'm not sure. I have to poke around and see if I have any pots. It need to be a plastic pot because I'm gonna have to kind of crimp it to make it fit in that gap. But I could do it and then um, I'm uh, reworking the drip. So that's the last emitter that I need to kind of pull and do some stuff with. But otherwise, everything's done. And I did give everything a starter fertilizer, which isn't really necessary. Or not everything, the caladiums and the impatients I gave a starter fertilizer. Because those are pretty much the only things that I put in here with the... I mean, the Creeping Jenny got it too, because it's in with the impatients and caladiums. That's about it that needed something like that. And um, the Bonide Slug and Bug Killer, I have that sprinkled around everything because you know, the slugs and snails talk about it all the time. They've been doing their thing, wreaking havoc. So hopefully that will help solve that problem. Well, look at that. I did something in the beginning of the vlog. Having nice weather makes such a big difference. Yes, I probably should have been working on cutting out this dead pine tree. But like I said, I'm just, that's the, what dead pine tree? I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, I just replied to myself. Things have gone too far. All right, and then now that the bulk of the caladiums have been pulled from this pot over here, I can start planting things in there, which was the original plan the entire time. Uh, there's supposed to be sun impatience in there. There's still a lot of caladiums in there, and this is where I've moved a lot of plants to because the, the, the rain has just been sucking the life out of things. So anything that needs more water, I have back because I have drip micro emitters that will get things. And then the plants that want to be on the more dry side, I have out towards the front. And these are things I'm going to work into planters. But you can see I just, I had to bring them over here. They were in a different location where they just weren't drying out well. So these are Monardas. And look at, I mean, they just look terrible. They've been getting drenched from all the rain. So things are a little bit more toasty over here. So it should kind of bake that out. Lots of things get planted. A lot of these are actually going to go in planters. It'll be in separate videos. But this is where I've moved a lot of these things and I would like to maybe do something else so that I can fix up that area right there. I almost forgot, I have this guy, which I think look beautiful right here. 
A little bit of sun damage, but it's all right. It was like a buck or two. Yep, I like that. I know I just said I was going to put an impatient there. Maybe I still will, but I, I, did, I like that over here. Some variegation. Lots of color and variegation. Okay, so I'm not fully done. Like, I just tucked that in down there, and then uh, this has been bugging me. It, probably not an issue to other people, but there's just a lot of green here. There's the variegation, which is nice. I'd like another pop of color because... I like a lot of colors. So you saw that contrast, right? So there's this right here. See, like just, oh, pretty. Lots of green, very lush. And then it's like, oh my gosh, what happened? So I have these bromeliads over here, just some vicias. These are like ones I had picked up on clearance a while ago. They've been back on my orchid wall. I've unpotted them and I'm going to tuck them back into this little nook here. It's dark, it's damp. So I'm not really too worried about the roots. And I mean, they're a, uh, uh, did I call these Tolanzias? Did I? If I did that, I didn't mean to. Uh, they're um, epithetic, so I'm not really concerned about the roots being out of the pots because I'd have to slow my brain down. I'm so sorry. Not worried about the roots being out of their pots because they're one. They're going to be confined. The main thing is that it stays dark around the roots, and it's not really dry. There's not too much airflow, so they'll be fine with that. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to grab these guys right here. I have three of them, the other one fell back there, and um, plug them in. So as long as there's enough of a gap in here for me to make them fit, you don't want to stay in focus, do you? That's fine. You don't have to. You can do whatever you want to, Bromeliads, you're pretty. Okay, there we go. It was a tight fit, but made it work. I mean, that's still a lot of... It's just, it needed to be there. It makes me very happy. So those, that still... I shouldn't have said this was done anyways, because the garden's never done. There's always things to do, and I still need to pot up that thing and do things over there, but... Yeah. I'm happy. This makes me very happy. <laughs> you detect the enthusiasm in my voice. I like for things to take off for a while before I get too into it. I do think I might go ahead and pop a curcuma in that pot right here. I think that that would... Look nice. They're kind of cool pots. These are from Lowe's. I got them again on clearance years ago. They I think they're those Alan Roth ones. I was going to reserve this to put a heliconia in on the hot tub because I already have a heliconia in one of these on the hot tub, but I think it would be fine to have one over here and one over there. It just kind of rounds things out a little bit, I suppose. So get that old soil out of there and pop this up. You know, this would actually be a good spot to put some more impatience, wouldn't it? What colors I have left over here. Some of them aren't in bloom, so it's kind of hard to say. So I guess I'm just going to go kind of random with it. And the nice thing about the Impatience being in a pot with this one is that if it turns out there's just not quite enough light over here, let's pick it up and move it. The curcuma, they can go into the shade or, wow, everything over here is looking very tropical. Um, to even part sun, as long as it's like the right climate for it. Afternoon sun, not always great, but they can take it as long as they're acclimated to it. And, you know, shouldn't be too terribly dry either. They need to be moist. They're a ginger, so hot, dry, blazing afternoon sun, that wouldn't be a good combination. There we go. So glad I spent so long cleaning up over here, just making more messes. It's fine. Give that a quick water in. I didn't use miracle growth. this. The gingers, they like something with um, sustenance to it. And the, you know, that miracle Grow potting soil I buy because it's the most economic thing for me to do, but I have to add a lot to it to bring that potting soil to life. Because there's just, like I said, there's not much to it. With this, um, I used a compost type potting soil. Let me see if I can find the bag. I lost a sandal in the process. There it is. Sun Grow Horticulture. See, it's very loamy, but it's very, very, very rich in organic manner. Manner, matter. And I like it. It's very moisture retentive too, which is fine for the, um, for uh, what, it, gingers. That's what we just planted, right? Gingers. Because the thing about it is that having lots of organic matter in there, some bone meal and other things, a little bit of biotone starter, I always add that. It helps encourage the mycorrhizae, the fungi, good things to be happening around the roots. And those are things you want in your soil because they break things down and release nitrogen and help your plants take up nutrients. So... That's the situation there. That's why whenever you see me using the miracle Grow, it's always in a wheelbarrow and I'm adding a lot to it because it, it needs help. Like, unless you're going to fertilize, like do a, do a micro-fertilization pretty much every single time you water, needs a little bit of help. 
Okay, that's enough for this area. I'm done with this for now. I like it though. Lots and lots of color. Make me very happy. Okay, so now that that area is done, oh, what great quality in that zoom, right? Or, I mean, done. Done. Still some tying to do. Those are the plants that are left over. There's some coleus and an orchid I didn't want to put in there and a ginger that needs to be repotted. They didn't fit in there. The orchid wouldn't have been compatible with too much water. So after finishing that up, I came over here, put in some sun impatience. It's just a sun patience, what is this, hot coral in the middle and then neon pink. There's a begonia in there, Dracania marginalis back there, it's a tricolor one, and a um, Asclepius, pardon the pizza slice, I don't, I wish that that wasn't there, belongs to a friend of mine who likes to float around in the pool on a slice of pizza, but that's a Asclepius carasavacchia, one with the orange and yellow flowers that'll come up above everything, kind of up here, great for the monarchs and butterflies, there is a mandevilla in there, that is just kind of potted up with that um, Dracania. I didn't put it there, they came together. So I was like, you can grow, that's fine. If you want to grow up the trunks of the palm, that's okay. Cause it'd be temporary, I'll be pulling it out. Otherwise vines growing up the trunks of palms, depending on the palm, not a great idea. It just depends on the plant. I wouldn't let it go as like, if this were perennial, I wouldn't let that stay on the Alexander palm. It, it wouldn't be great for it. Done some rearranging here. That's not really going to be obvious to anyone. Fertilize my hibiscus. And for anyone who has wondered, this is, I like this hibiscus booster from Hidden Valley Hibiscus. Works really well. And then I also use, where is it? The Petunia Feed from Jack's Classic. Has similar values somewhat to the hibiscus fertilizer. This is just a little bit easier to get a hold of than placing an order from Hidden Valley Hibiscus. And I think that um, Jax actually has a hibiscus food too. And yet, this is also what I use my petunias. Really great stuff for the petunias. Isn't that such a pretty hibiscus? That's the Tradewinds one. I show it off every single time it blooms. It's very sunset-y. I like it a lot. Oh, and then here's an update on that crinum lily that was I think towards the end of the last vlog, I'm not sure, but look at, I need to not play with those flowers too much, and I'll break them. Just look at, they're so big though. Look at that. That's gonna be so pretty when it opens. Crinums, I have to get them kind of small because it's harder to find a hardy variety and the places I order them from send them in tiny pots. So this thing has been in the ground for probably, I wanna say uh, seven or eight years. And I think this is only the third time it's bloomed. It's been three years in a row. It's blooming every year now which is excellent, but um, it's been nice to get flowers out of it. It would be nice, it's gotten big enough now that you would think that some of the other growths would send up, oh, the, look at that. There is a bud down there. Hopefully it can come up and escape the shade. I really need to divide this sucker up though. Look at how big it's gotten. This dies all the way back down to the ground in the winter time. It's a, it's a big crinum, very pretty flowers. <laughs> Sweet potato vines look so stupid. I'm gonna come in here and trim off all this stuff on top because it just that doesn't I'm not into it. I'm not into the these Sweet Caroline Sweet Petunias. I'm pretty sure that's what these are. Aren't these the Sweet Caroline Marguerite Limes? Did I leave the tag in there? Oh hi mushroom. I guess I didn't. Well whatever. I'm not a fan. Too too bushy and full. That's nothing a little pruning won't fix though, right? Because I love the sweet potato vines, but at the same time, it's just, it's not working for me. I want to, if I can find some more <laughs> Supertunia Vistas, I want to go ahead and on one end of the pool, I haven't decided which, pull the sweet potato vines out and do the uh, Supertunia Vista silverberries on each side where the sweet potato vines are, just so I can see what it looks like this year and make a better decision next year. Creeping Jenny would also be an option, but I just kind of figured it would get too hot, that dark pavement and everything would reflect up and bake it but it hasn't been that hot i mean it's been hot but it's been so up and down that i'm not i don't know i don't know <laughs> okay i'm all talked out it is a beautiful day i have a friend coming over let's go on a field trip i'll probably just cut to music so here's some pretty things
Wasn't that fun? Look what Tucker did to those poor petunias. Ugh, he gets away with so much now that he's getting old. The sunflowers are really pretty, weren't they? I was thinking I'd do a lot more filming when I was there, but not as many words in bloom as I thought, so that was probably pretty short, but they're pretty. Also, check out this action going on behind my barbecue grill. So what I'm about to show you has nothing to do with anything, but look at it. Look at it. Isn't it perfect? Adorable. Look at this one getting its lean on, doing its own thing. That's all. I was just getting ready to grow some vegetables and I was like, well, that's freaking adorable. And it's getting late. So I'm not ending things here, but I had a package come in the mail. They've been showing up at nighttime and these are plants. So I need to do an unboxing. So I think what I'm going to do here, I'm just gonna go ahead and pop it open. These are aquatic plants from Palm Plants Online. So I don't really wanna leave them in here overnight. They're not going to wanna be that dry. So here's everything. I'll do like the full unboxing tomorrow. For tonight, I think I'm just going to make sure that they're humid and everything, and I'll show you what they are tomorrow. Okay, now they're still fairly moist. They should be okay tonight, especially outside. I might actually, I know it sounds a little weird, I might just kind of hit this box with the hose, just a quick get the newspaper wet, and um, pick back up in the morning, open these up and see what's in here and get things potted up. Who's up for a little nighttime adventure? Uh, <laughs> Colby is out during the day, my tortoise. Yeah, I forgot to bring her in. I bring her in before sunset every night. And uh, it's usually not a problem. Colby comes to the door like a dog, ready to come in the house, but I'm not seeing. This is usually where, when it gets really hot or she wants to take a nap, this is where she goes. She buries herself under the arborvitae here, but I don't, yeah, I don't. Been looking for a while. Where'd you go, Colby? You're here? You're under the pedicets? Maybe? No? Yes? Doesn't look like it. Not seeing her there. We're over here. Don't think there are any nooks and crannies over here that are big enough for Colby to get into. Now, the sulcatas, they're a pretty sturdy tortoise, but there are foxes around. I've been seeing a bunch of them. I don't think they could pull Colby through the fence, but, um... I do think they could still destroy Colby. They'd probably be deterred by the spurs. That's the whole point in the African spur thighed tortoise. It's just not worth the risk to me. That and uh, any fence they can see through. So I have... I'm sure my neighbors are going to love this. Doesn't matter. You can't see it anyways. So if there's not a visual barrier, then they will try and dig for freedom. Why is that happening? Eh, found her. Okay, so I just filmed the... Fern Friday, crocodile fern, and I need my pot. Oh, okay. All right, smashed a plant. It's okay. It's all right. It was just an impatient. I originally got this so that I could um, put like uh, what was it, lotus and things in there, and so I need to get this filled up. And I'm gonna give the plants a soak. They need to rehydrate for a few hours before I can pot them up. I may not pot them up in this video. We'll see. Probably not though. That was fun, wasn't it? Hopefully audio's okay. I'm trying to stand kind of down this way from the microphone. This is, it's really just going to be kind of an unboxing. Looking at the plants, I will do like a proper potting video at another time. I need to get these guys soaking. They need to get into the water and rehydrate for a little while and whatnot. But for starters, everything's packaged up really well. You saw it in the other clip where it was and there, this is the Southern Charm, which was the main reason I wanted to order from this place. I had seen that in the video from, uh, I don't know, a couple videos ago, and I went to my botanical gardens and I just absolutely fell in love with the flowers on this particular water lily. I can't find any pictures that really do it justice. Like, you just, you can't see how gorgeous this flower is in pictures. But that was, what drove this entire thing, I was already looking to get something uh, to do some water lily bowls with, and that's going to be a separate video, which I think I already mentioned, so sorry about that. Southern Charm, this is a tropical water lily, so it will have to be overwintered properly in order to keep on going and doing its thing. Look at that, it's even got a couple of blooms on it, some buds, that's pretty cool. I don't know if much is going to happen with those. They're considered a medium water lily, meaning that they go... I mean, I would think that this would be a medium to large water lily, 
but the size that's listed for them is four to six foot. That's the spread. Party zones 10 and 11. You can see the pads are modeled and very pretty. It is supposed to be a prolific bloomer, which is fantastic. And the flowers are supposed to be really, really fragrant too, which is awesome. That's one of the nice things with the um, tropical water lilies is they do tend to be a little bit more fragrant, but it's non-viviporous, which means that it should be a very free flowering plant and that's pretty cool. And the next is the Siam Sunset Peach. This is a hardy water lily. Here's what that one looks like. I'm a little bit confused because the Sunset Peach isn't one that I thought they said anything about having modeled foliage on it. I'm, I'm pretty sure the description on the website just said that it was just green pads. So uh, I either have the wrong plant here, their description was wrong, or this is just an immature plant characteristic and that can happen sometimes. So uh, I'm hoping it's the right plant because it's a really cool water lily. Hardy zones three to 11, a medium to large one. They didn't list the size on it. It's a newer hybrid from Thailand. It's supposed to be a very, very, very heavy bloomer. And the color on the flowers, I think is, that's what draws me into it. It's just a beautiful water lily. All right, and then the last of the water lilies is the Juan Visa water lily. It's another hardy water lily. Party zones 3 to 11, they're fast growers, heavy bloomers, 3 to 6 foot spread, zones 3 to 11. Bloom size on these, supposed to be about 4 to 6 inches, nice big flowers. What's really cool about the Juan Visa is it does have variegated foliage. There aren't a ton of hardy water lilies that have variegated foliage. That's why I was a little bit skeptical with the Siam sunset over here because I feel like with a hardy water lily that's something that they would have pointed out. It's something a lot of people look for. but. I don't know. But very pretty variegated foliage on these pads, typical, more typical of what you would see in a tropical water lily and the flowers. The flowers are the really cool things with these. It's a peach to kind of a pink flower with yellow speckling and modeling. Sometimes they'll be like split in half. Really interesting looking water lily. For now they're just getting soaked. They need to rehydrate. I have them sitting in the mostly shade that'll get a little bit of morning sun here. And um, yeah, I'll pot them on up probably in the morning. I, I really probably could do it now. It's just it's getting kind of dark and I don't want to lose my life to finish this vlog, to be honest. But there are two more plants. They're marginals, bog type plants. This is the fantastic arrowhead or Sagittaria latifolia fantastica. It's a perennial, at least where I live, zone six to 11. They go full to part sun. 12 to 18 inches high, 12 inches wide. They should be grown in just damp, moist soil or up to three inches deep, no deeper than that. But the thing I really like about this plant is it's not showing here yet on this one, but there should be a picture up on the screen, I hope. You can see that it's variegated. And the arrowhead plants, they, I mean, they have a very tropical appearance to them. They're extremely vigorous. They're an excellent, excellent plant to throw into your pond if you're having any types of issues with, um, like excess nutrients. They're very heavy feeders. They'll help get the water clean. They're also aggressive growers, but that's okay. But yeah, that variegated foliage is what really drew me into this. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be leaving this to soak. If it floats, it can soak. That's fine. The black coral elephant ear. That's the very last one. I have had so much trouble finding these for sale this year. The only time I've seen them, it was like $40 for one in a three gallon pot, and it was very overpotted. It wasn't much bigger than this one. So I was happy to see that, which means that I will not be treating this as an annual. They're hardy zone 7B to 10, and you know I'm in 6B, so wouldn't overwinter very well, but uh, it should be pretty easy to either store it dormant or bring it in with like the tropical water lily. It, it doesn't even have to come in and stay wet. It can, it, they're not that hard to overwinter, so that's what I'm trying to get at. So I'll be bringing that inside, and it will do well. I actually have a video on the black coral elephant ears because they're one of my absolute favorites of the Kalakajas. So that, if you want more information on that, that would be a good video to check out. This one's a sinker, so I'm just going to keep it moist. I'm going to go ahead and actually probably just set it in a pot for now that has a little bit of water on the bottom. And then I'll handle that in the morning also. It's just it's losing the sunlight. It kind of changes things and messes things up a little bit. So sorry about that. It's just one of those days. Had a lot to get done and didn't have time to film. So I'm sorry about that. I wanted to do this earlier this morning. But um, I did keep these moist. I kept them in the shade. So they're okay. I mean, you can see they're, they're, they look pretty healthy. I'm not really worried about them. They're going to be fine. And then I also picked up this bag of the Landon Aquatic Fertilizer. This is the 7803. This is supposed to be an absolutely amazing aquatic plant fertilizer, particularly for water lilies, mostly for getting new plants started. 
I am a little bit confused because the directions right here don't fully match up with the directions on the website. On the website, they say to use a half strength and whatnot, so I'm going to um, look into this a little bit more. That's another reason I'm not doing the potting tonight because this is when you actually blend with the soil that you're potting the plants up with. So it's not like you can edit later. It has to go in with the potting medium that you use with the water lilies. So I need to kind of figure out who I should trust, the package or the pond plant website. Because they were suggesting to use a half strength and uh, I don't know, I don't want to over fertilize them. You only have to apply this like every, what does it say on here, 60 days. So you only apply it like twice and then you switch over to like fertilize tablets. Is that what that says? I'll just read you what it says there. Combine a ha combine. Combine a half cup land in 7803 with each gallon of soil. Fill pot two thirds full with this mixture that's you know, blended with the soil. Insert your tuber, cover with plain soil, so soil that has been blended with the fertilizer. And it says that's all you need for 60 days. It says after this date, begin using your favorite 1048 tablet according to the manufacturer instructions. Which is kind of surprising because I wasn't seeing them, um, at least this Landon making any plant tabs but I can see that this is manufactured by plant tabs. So this is actually worth looking into. There's an interesting story behind Kenneth Landon and everything he's done with the Water Lily Society and everything like that. He's done a lot of stuff at University of Texas. It's supposed to be great stuff but it's more of like a get the plants going sort of thing. I really hope the audio is okay there because I kept kind of looking away from the camera so Hopefully it's alright. It's a vlog, you know, keeping things casual over here. These are still nice and moist. And this is like the perfect time to be doing this really because it's, I mean, typically it wouldn't be the best time to be doing this because July is usually really hot, but the weather's been really cool. So I'm not that worried about transplant shock or anything like that. The water will stay fairly cool for a little while, which is nice. That's not, I mean, I would prefer the summer heat. The tropical plants would really prefer the summer heat. But I can still keep doing things like planting, which, you know, when it's 100 degrees outside, you're not really supposed to do. I usually do it anyways. But uh, I think it's going to make for a better adjustment with these plants, particularly as they get potted up and transitioned over. Also, why did I fill this all the way up? That was just dumb. I can't move this. I'm going to have to move this to a butt. Uh, that was not smart. The things I'll do for a very stupid and quick time lapse. And the reason I was talking about how much light this is getting isn't just because I want, I'm going to need to acclimate them back into full sun since they've been shipped, but their roots are exposed. Exposed roots shouldn't be exposed to light. They need to be in the dark. And since it's already getting dark right now, that's why I'm not really too worried about it. They'll be okay until morning. Okay, fine. I'll pop one up on camera. The rest I'm going to do off camera. It's going to take a while. Like I said, I'm losing light. Just using a hanging basket with some standard garden soil in it. Nothing special. Like I said, the directions for this said to use a half cup per gallon of potting mix, and then on the website, they said to use half that strength. Not this website, the pond plant website. So I'm, I don't know, I'm going to do what the package says, which is a half cup per gallon, and there's, I'm going to go with one, uh, with a half and a, so three quarters, because there's a pretty hefty amount of soil in there. It's a pretty big hanging basket that I'm using that around as much as I can until it's nice and homogenous and everything's even. I almost forgot to take that hanger off of there. It's metal so I don't really want to leave that on there. Also I did treat that water that I dropped the water always into with just a teeny tiny bit of decoordinator uh, and it has a metal neutralizer in it also. Let me go grab my tuber. Using this for that southern charm water lily Typically with the water lily, you put the tuber at a 45 degree angle, the edge of the pot. This one's not a tuber water lily. So I'm it's still, I don't, what do I, wait, what do I do? <laughs> the main thing is you don't want the crown to be submerged under their soil. So I'll just, I'm gonna, I'm gonna wing it, make sure the crown stays above. And the soil that I put up at this point, it's not gonna have any of that fertilizer and it said not to do that. Okay, now I have a little bit of space in here in case I needed to add some sand. I don't think I'm going to need to do that with this, but it's kind of hard to tell because it's dirty. But the main thing is that, like I said, I don't want the soil up over that crown. I want it down here, down below it. This doesn't have, to have um, very many roots on it, so that possesses a bit of a challenge because it's gonna wanna float up like, I don't know, I want to raise it up a little bit more so I could put some sand in here. But if I do that, I know this entire thing is just going to want to float away. And I'm going to put just a little bit of sand 
up here. Not a lot, just a little bit to help kind of keep the soil from floating around a lot when I submerge this, but um, not too much. Never use gravel with water lilies. And people say not to use sand either. I've never, I've never had any problems using sand before, but um, wouldn't be surprised people come for me in the comments over it. But like I said, never been an issue for me. Main thing is that the crown isn't submerged. All right, now I have this in its pot that's gonna be in for a little while. I wish I had something more wide because then I wouldn't have to put very much water in this. With water lilies that don't have much of a root system to keep them anchored, having something really wide is useful because you can keep the water really shallow. You don't want to go any more shallow than six inches, and it varies like from water lily to water lily. With this one, I'd probably want a minimum foot, and that would allow it so the pads could still float. But the way this is, yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to pull that off. So I'm just very slowly filling it from the bottom. I'll decorinate it. Not 100% necessary, but do it anyways just to be safe. Just so there's less like shock on the plant and everything. And that's pretty much it. Okay, that's good enough. Doesn't need to go any deeper than that. That took a very, very long time to get the water in there nice and slow. So I don't disturb that plant down there. I don't want to tear it up or anything. I don't want it floating up out of the soil. That's all there is to it. And it looks like the crown is just up high enough. It doesn't need to be very deep while it's taking off and getting started, so this will do. It's gonna adjust a little bit. Like I said, something a little bit more wide would be ideal. This will work. I wasn't expecting these to come yet. I was thinking these were gonna come next Tuesday. So it was a little, or er, um, they were gonna ship next Tuesday. I was just off by a week, so I just like, wasn't fully prepared. But yeah, that's it. Very simple. And I'm going to put some mosquito dunks in there because stagnant water and mosquitoes, not a good combo. The mosquitoes have been terrible this year. So that's basically, look at the pine. I don't see it. It looks fine to me, right? I don't, what are you talking about? What dead pine tree? I am going to wrap things up here. Look what the sun did to these helicages, or more the heat, I should say, when we had that heat spell and things were radiating up on there. Radiating? Rad Talking's hard. But the sun is going down, so got to get a few things done get this video edited for one ah, i hope everybody's doing well having a great day great life everything's just going fantastic for you i'll have the rest of that video the aquatic planters out in a few days i have like an update from a couple vlogs ago sprayed over here and that sooty mold is getting much better so i don't think the white flies are an issue anymore which is great i'll have to spray again though i just used neem i didn't want to use anything too strong i wanted to use something where i could spray everything down let it sit overnight and come back and rinse it off in the morning. So like I mentioned, I didn't see any honeybees. So I've got to take it easy with chemicals. Everybody needs to. When I was at the sunflower place, not a single honeybee, not one, which is mind boggling to me because usually they're just everywhere. It's really scary. We need those honeybees. They're very important. Sometimes Colby likes to hide out in these nooks and crannies. Usually it's like one of three places, but tonight it's not in any of those spots. This is unfortunate. I have all my social media linked down below so you can follow me and that's a good place to get in touch with me. Also, I use Instagram way more than anything else. And thank you everyone for hanging out and it was a fun week of gardening. Got a lot done. I mean, I know this doesn't seem like a lot. I did a lot of stuff I didn't film just because it wasn't really filming worthy, but like, uh, like working some soil and mulching and little things like that. This was what I was most happy about getting done. It's already filled out quite a bit in just a few days, so that's fantastic. Hey, if you like the video, you wanna leave it a thumbs up, that'd be fantastic, helps the videos a lot and helps the channel, and I appreciate it, so thank you. And subscribe as well and hit that notification bell, I'll upload multiple times a week, and that way you'll know when new videos come out. You can see there's some hints of pink finally starting to work their way out on the vanilla stri strawberry, strawberry? <laughs> vanilla strawberry hydrangea. It's a paniculata, likes a lot of sun. Starts white, turns pink. I talk about it all the time. It's one of my favorite plants I have in my backyard. At least as far as plants go that aren't like tropical, tropical plants. All right, as always, and most importantly, everybody, keep on growing. Bye.